what do you do when you are on dependent on a global power and it ditches when you needed it the most? You said to become a self-reliant, right? That's what India has set out to do in two decades ago and is now on the verge of accomplishments. In Pakistani troops took position in Kargil in 1999, one of the first things Indian military sought was the global posting system or the GPS data for the region. The space-based navigation system maintained by the US government would have provided the vital information but the US denied it to the India. A need for an indigenous satellite navigation system was felt earlier but the Kargil experience made the nation realize its inevitability. The two decades later, the NAVIC, the India's own GPS which has been developed to challenge the current GPS system of the Western countries, is in the final stage of the launch. It will soon be offered as the Indian counter to the foreign system currently being used by the companies and others. The request for proposal of the RFP has been called to start the implementation of the NAVIC so that the platform can be rolled out and popularized. IT Secretary Ajay Prakash Savani told to the Times of India. The GPS was named Navic, the navigation with Indian constellation whose Hindi meaning is Sailor or Navigator. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India, after the launch of Indian Regional Navigation System or the IRNSS 1G, the last of seven dedicated satellites in 2016. NAVIC is designed to provide accurate position information to the users within the country. It will help India enter the club of select countries which have their own positioning systems. Besides America's GPS with 24 satellites in a constellation, Russia has its GLONASS and the European Union its Galileo. Interestingly, China is still on the development or the processing of building a bearded navigation satellite system. With seven satellites, the Navi covers only India and its surrounding and is considered to be the most accurate than the American system. Navig will provide the standard positioning services to all the users with a position accuracy of 5 meter. The GPS on the other hand has a position accuracy of 20 to 30 meters. The indigenous navigation system is believed to have cost ISRO around 1400 crores and will aid terrestrial aerial and marine navigation vehicle tracking and fleet management, disaster management, mapping and geodetic data capture, visual and the wise navigation for drivers. Even more remarkable for the Indian scientists is that the Navic is technically superior to American GPS. Our system has dual frequency SNL bands, GPS dependent only on the L band. The low frequency signal travels through the atmosphere its velocity changes due to the atmospheric disturbance. US banks on the atmospheric model to assess the frequency error and has to update this model from time to time to assess the exact error. In India's case, we measure the difference in delay of the dual frequency with S and L bands and can access the actual delay. Therefore, Navic is not dependent on any model to find the frequency error and is more accurate than the GPS of US, said Tapan Misra. The director of Amada Bay's Space Application Center, or the SAC, told to Economic Times last year. So, what do you think of US is so shocked or should be surprised of India's navigation system against GPS of the US, which is more superior than the US GPS navigation system? So, what do you think of it? India's economy will be hit hard by the combination of the global tariff battle and the US Federal Reserve's monetary tightening the cycle, according to a study by the economist at the Robo Bank International. A tariff battle will reduce exports and lead to import inflations, which will hurt Indian purchasing power and investments, according to Robo Bank study. That could mean much as 2.3% of missed GDP growth for India by 2022. Many countries would end up being caught in the middle. Economist Hugo Erkan, Rafi Hayat, and Marjin Harumaskin 
wrote about the current trade spat between the US and China and India. India could fall the victim to advise the trade policies of the US or the China out of both. The site three possible scenarios how this could happen. China targets the Indian export because the nation is regarded to be an American ally. India chooses not to side with Donald Trump's administration and the US has a go at the Indian exports India retaliates against the US. In other side, this goes against the argument that India is relatively insulated from a trade battle. Given its low share of total world export of just 1.7%, President Donald Trump of US has threatened the tariff on $150 billion of Chinese imports in retaliation for the alleged violation of the intellectual property rights. While the Beijing vote to retaliate on everything from American soybeans to the plains. Besides a possible trade battle, a faster than expected tightening of US monetary policy will lead to their capital outflow. The Rabobank's model estimates India losing $22 billion in the capital flows by 2022. With the scenario getting complicated further in the case of the political instability hits India, the South Asian nation heads into the national election next year. In such an event, the rubber bank model sees the rupee depreciating sharply and the missed capital flows will amount to $32 billion by 2022. If India uses its foreign reserves in such a case, the interest rates could rise sharply as the liquidity decreases. They also wrote, adding that even though India's reserves are substantial markets, might will still become a concern about the prospects of further declines. All in all, these developments will create major speed bumps on India's road to economic prosperity while the demonetization GST and the cash crunch are crunching India's economy because of some losing and foolish policies of Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of India. So what do you think the US is surprised of India might get into the trade battle with the US and China? In New Delhi, the Trade Ministry of India and the UK would meet in London on January 11 as of part of the Joint Economic Trade Committee JETCO, deliberation to boost bilateral commerce. Next India-UK Joint E-Commerce and Trade Committee JETCO, meeting co-chaired by the Commerce and the Industry Minister Suresh Prabhu, to be held in the London on January 11, 2018, the Department of Commerce said in a tweet. In the last meeting, the both sides reviewed the progress and held in the joint working groups on areas like smart cities and advanced manufacturing. The bilateral trade between India and the UK dipped to USD $12.2 billion in 2016-17, as against the USD $14 billion in the previous fiscal year. India received a USD $24.9 billion foreign investment from the Britain between April 2002 September 2017 of FDI. As of India's props cheap detergent chemical imports from China, India has initiated an anti-dumping probe into imports of Chinese chemical used in the detergent following the complaints from the some domestic companies. Gujarat Credo, Emerald Industries and Chemical India have filed an application before the Director General of Anti-Dumping and Allied Duties, a DGAD, for the initiation of investigation into the imports of Geolite Fourier, a detergent gray, from China. In a notification, the DGAD said the prima facie it has found sufficient evidence of dumping of the chemical. The anti-dumping duty, if imposed, would help guard the domestic players in the sector against the cheap imports of the product. The authority hereby initiates an investigation into the alleged dumping and the consequent injury to the domestic industry itself. In the probe, it will determine the existence and the effect of the alleged dumping and recommend that the amount of anti-dumping duty which is levied would be adequate to remove the injury to the domestic industry. The period from April 2016 to June 2017 or 15 months time will be taken for the probe. The countries carry out the anti-dumping probe to determine whether their domestic industries have been hurt because of the surge in the cheap imports. As a countermeasures, they import duties under the multilateral regime of WTO. The duty is aimed at ensuring the fair trading practices 
and creating a level playing field for the domestic producers with regard to the foreign producers and the exporters. India has already imposed anti-dumping duty on the several products of tackled cheap imports including from China. The country has imposed the duty on as many 98 products as on December 27 last year of 2017 imported from China. So what do you think of the new bilateral economic trade between India and UK and the new anti-dumping policy against China's imports to India? Post your comments below and if you like this video please give a thumbs up and follow us in social networks and subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching. This is WC Daily. Think big, think different. Bye.